We are obviously living in the present. Modern world where our lives are anchored to factual information we normally see on books and internet. But a lot of historical stories had been left out. There are notable people who used to be influential in their time. People who contributed so much in arts, science, and literacy. And people who became an instrument in molding the human race's knowledge, but now forgotten. And that is why we are here to explore and travel back in time where these people existed and lived. I am Damirica Ford. And I am Shansen Andres. Come, Come and join, join us as, as we look back in the history of one of the most prominent philosophers in the world. We know a lot of people became successful in their lives through dedication, hard work, and whatnots. Almost all of them became widely popular because of their beauty, talent, appeal, and so on. All these people become the front line of social media and are now becoming influential personalities to other people. But if we are going to open our history books to look for all these that are quite popular back then, they probably are immeasurable. These people in the early years of the world became the moral foundation of history because of their teachings that we can apply in our modern society. One good example is Aristotle, a Greek philosopher of the past. Aristotle was a Greek philosopher born around 384 BC in Stagira, a small town on the northern coast of Greece that was once a seaport. His father Nicomanchus was a court physician to the Macedonian king Aminthas II. Aristotle was still young when his father died, but his affiliation with the Macedonian court closely remained for the rest of his life. His mother, on the other hand, died when he was just a young boy. After his parents died, Proxenius of Athenius, who was married to Aristotle's older sister, Arminthes, became Aristotle's guardian. So basically, it was a tough childhood for Aristotle, since at his early age, he lost his father, and he did not have any longer chance to be with his mother. As the story goes, Aristotle was sent to Athens by Proxenius when he turned 17 years old to pursue a higher education in Plato's academy. They consider Athens as the academic center of the universe. Plato's academy? Yep, he enrolled in Plato's academy and remained there for 20 years. His teacher was Plato, who is also a classical Greek philosopher and a mathematician who owned the school that Aristotle enrolled in. This long association made his bond with his teacher Plato and his educational establishment very strong. Plato was a student of Socrates, the founder of the Academy in Athens, and a well-known Greek scholar who is renowned for his philosophies. Plato along with Socrates, played a vital role in laying foundations of Western philosophy and science. It is said that Aristotle left the academy in 338 BC because he was disappointed with Plato's nephew, Sosipus, being made the director of the academy after Plato's death. Aristotle was totally some kind of a kicker after quitting Plato's academy. Aristotle went home to Macedonia to start tutoring King Philip II's son, Alexander the Great. Aristotle played a very important role in Alexander the Great's life when he conquered Athens in 335 BC. And during that time, Aristotle also went back to the city. He also started his own school in Athens called the Lyceum. Aristotle's extant writing consists largely of his written versions of his lectures. Some passages appear to be interpolations of notes made by his students. The texts were edited and given their present form of Andronicus of Rhodes in the 1st century BC. In late 19th century, 
Athens's constitution of Athens, an account of Athenian government was found. Aristotle's philosophy is not far from the others. His philosophy focused on his systematic concept of logic. Aristotle's objective was to come up with a universal process of reasoning that would allow man to learn every conceivable thing about reality. The initial process involved describing objects based on their characteristics, states of being, and actions. Aristotle also taught that knowledge of a thing beyond its classification and description requires an explanation of causality or why it is. He posited four causes or principles of explanation. The material cause or the substance of which the thing is made. The formal cause or its design. The efficient cause or its maker or builder. And the final cause or its purpose or function. In the modern thought, the efficient cause is generally considered the central explanation of a thing. But for Aristotle, the final cause had primacy. He thought all things in nature should be open to examination and subject to reason. And he set about applying his methods to all knowledge. Aristotle examined the nature of matter, space, time, and motion. He had few tools for experimentation and could not measure time or speed. He would not allow invisible forces, so his reasoning did not include gravity. Things fell to earth and the moon circled to earth because that was their nature. In the field of cosmology, he proved that the earth was a sphere when he observed that the shadow of the earth on the moon during the eclipse was an arc. And most importantly, the Nicomachean ethics contributed so much in our society because in this philosophy, Aristotle describes the happy life intended for man by nature as one lived in accordance with virtue. And in his politics, he describes the role that politics and political community must play in bringing about the virtuous life in the citizenry. of Aristotle did not only focus into a particular concept of the world, but rather these teachings radiated in many aspects. His teachings with regards to fundamental physics and cosmology helped to extend our knowledge in the field of science. His discovery about the earth proved that the earth is not the flat surface as some of the people suggest that it really is. Also, Aristotle's belief that the body and soul were one essential to theological beliefs. This is one of the reasons why we still follow the practices of the churches up to this day. In 322 BC, just a year after he fled to Chalcis to escape prosecution under charges of impity, Aristotle contracted a disease of the digestive organs and died. A life of a philosopher can be defined as something that is complex, yet full of knowledge and ideas. Just like Aristotle, his life had never been an easy track, but his contributions to humanity is observable. Nowadays, as we are still clinging to his beliefs and thoughts. All things have a purpose. As he stated, whatever we see around us, has a reason for existence. Indeed, this philosopher is the most influential ancient thinkers in a number of philosophical fields. And that we should commemorate his existence and continuously respect and apply his philosophies. Once again, I am Shansan Andres. And I am Demerica Ford. 
Let us not forget our epic history because it is our key in molding our future and humanity. Thank you for watching.